Hello everyone and welcome to episode 13 of All The Mods 3. So last episode we made the Forge Industrium and it was quite a technical episode and I thought this time we switch it a little bit to exploration in order to keep it maybe a little bit more entertaining. Uh, this time we are going to do Abyssal Craft. So why Abyssal Craft? Well, uh, there is a very good reason for it. We need elytras. We need the elytras in order to make the Opnium Core from Extra Utilities 2 and my right click didn't work. Uh, the Opnium core requires, I think, six elytras uh, per each core, and we need four of those cores for the Orb of Transcendence, which is also another component of the All the Mod Star. In Abyssal Craft, there is a recipe to craft elytras. So far, I have not been lucky to find elytras in the end, even though I have traveled 120,000 blocks in the end. So, um, I think Abyssal Craft should be a good solution. And yes, you can duplicate elytras using dragon scale, but this is more fun. The first thing we're going to need is a Necronomicon. Then we are going to need to find a river and follow it until we reach one of these. Inside these structures, you find these things. They're called Shoggoths. Uh, you should not kill them. Just try to aggro them so that they will come out and step on the ground. And also it's wise to make a clear ground for them. Unfortunately I could not find something in a nicer biome, there are a lot of trees here. So I'll chop some of them down and I will bring you back. You will notice that when they're walking on the ground they will leave a trail which is called Shogot Ooze. That's what we need, so uh, make them walk a lot. After a while you hear a noise and these things will pop up. On top of them there is a statue of a god and you need those statues in order to make PE. Which is kind of like energy in this mod or like mana if you want to put it that way. I need more of them so I'll just make them to walk a little bit more. And here's another one. So you get the idea, the more they walk around and spread the Shogot ooze, the more pillars you will have. And the more pillars you will have, the more statues. The more statues will generate more PE and you will be able to progress in this mod faster because PE is one of the bottlenecks. So you have to mine the statues and also it's a good idea to mine the uh, pillars which the statues spawn on top of. Because those blocks are also used as a crafting ingredients in this mod. Also, when you mine the blocks, there is a Shoggoth biomass on the bottom. That is actually the thing which spawns more Shoggoths. There is also some of them in the cave that we found in the river. So, uh, as long as they are there, Shoggoths will spawn. I think we are done here. I'll just want to take one of the Shoggoths with me, just in case we need more of them, and I'll kill the rest. Uh, oh, okay. You cannot kill them with a bow. <laughs> That's nice. Um, it's okay, I'll clean up this mess and I will bring you back. This mod adds several biomes to the game and this is one of the important ones because it contains Darkstone, which is this. You need a little bit just to craft some items, but I'll just vein mine some and I'll go back to the base. Another ingredient which is frequently used in this mod is called Corallium Pearl and you get it by smelting a Corallium infused stone and you make the stone by Corallium Gems. Corallium Gems comes from Corallium Ore which I cannot find it for some reason. Yeah, here. Uh, it shows you which Y level it spawns but that's not very accurate because it only spawns, spawns in two specific biomes. One of them is Deep Oceans and the other one is Corallium Infested Swamp which is just right next door to us. Uh, it's between the Astral Sorcery area and next to the zoo. So um, my idea is that we are going to use a digital miner because that's the easiest way. Um, I don't know the ore dictionary for this um, but we can check it. So you are Corallium ore? Okay. Let's see if you recognize it. Or Corallium. Would you? Oh yeah, you do. Perfect. Let's go mine some. This weird looking biome is called a Corallium Infested Swamp. Sorry, you cannot see it in the journey map because, I don't know, the journey map for my overworld does not work. And, uh, well, in any case, you put, we put the digital miner down and I do not want rubies anymore. So we will not take rubies. Wow, okay, that's decent enough. Um, they are affected by fortune, so it's a good idea to silk touch them. 
Alright guys, I gathered a couple of stacks of the ore and we are going to fortune them using the most primitive method of making a huge cube and vein mining it. It's like Project Ozone. <laughs> uh, it's okay, uh, there's nothing better than a fortune pickaxe for these things, so uh, we are going to do that. Corallium gem cluster, corallium infused stone, and corallium pearl. The next item that we are going to need is called a shadow gem. They drop from a shadow beast and uh, you can also find them in dungeon chests or combine uh, shadow shards or something. But I have found a shadow beast spawner on the bottom of our Botania island and I just marked it with dirt. <laughs> um, how far did I go down? Okay, this could take a while. Alright guys, this is the spawner that I was talking about and we just block the sunlight and one of them will spawn. They look like this. There are also smaller versions which they drop uh, shadow shards. Uh, you have to combine them and they're very expensive. So we actually got very lucky. Why can't I fly? <laughs> Yeah, well, let's put the torch on top anyway. So, uh, I was going to say that we were very lucky that this spawner was here, otherwise you have to look for one of them in the um, uh, abyssal craft biomes. Um, I don't think they do spawn in the swamp, but they do spawn in other biomes that are created by abyssal craft. In any case, I took one of them and we are going to spawn it in our spawner room. We are going to farm a little bit of them. Um, they, you don't need a lot of shadow gems because they are actually supposed to be super expensive in the mod. So uh, the mod author luckily did not make it so difficult. Uh, well, I think I get a few stacks just in case, but I don't think you will need more than half a stack of it. Uh, I just want to make sure that we will never ever need it again. Now it's time to talk about PE. If you put an idol on top of a monolith stone pillar, it will shot a burst of PE into your Necronomicon, provided that you keep the Necronomicon in your hand. Uh, let me make another demonstration for you. So if we take another idol and we put two of them, here and here, you will get two bursts. Well, uh, not at the same time, but on different occasions. You, each burst will give you five PE. This is a very awkward setup because it takes a long time and uh, you need thousands of PE and uh, you know, <laughs> you cannot stay there for an hour just to gather PE. A solution is to use an energy pedestal. It has a buffer of, I think the primitive one has a buffer of 1000 PE and you can put your book on top and the burst will go into the energy pedestal and transfer to your book. You can also add more statues on top of the pillars and you will get more PE over time. Um, this is not a very good setup in my opinion because um, if you use the gods, um, the statues, uh, I don't know, they're called gods, um, the bad things can happen around your base. Um, there could be lightning, there could be fire, there could be random explosions and also shaw gods and shadow beasts can spawn. I don't like this method, <laughs> so uh, I, don't, I, I like things to be under my control, I don't like random things happening next to my base. Another solution which I am going to use is using sacrifice and we just need to find the pick which is here. I just wanted to show you how to use the statue of the gods otherwise uh, I'm going to use this method. So if we put a sacrificial altar here we put our book on top and we kill the pick. How many do you have? 45. Cool. So let's try it. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. I can, I can accommodate, I can follow you. So we put you here, we put the book on top and we kill the pig. So let's see how much PE we have. You see it's 55. First of all it gives you 10 PE which is double and nothing bad can happen around you. So this is the path that I'm going to choose. We need a pig farm and you guys know the drill. We are going to use soul shards. One soul shard, one cute looking pig, and we farm them until our soul shard is at tier 5. And for the farm itself, we are going to use a monolith of experience to get rid of the XP. We are going to need a crate, a vacuum hopper on top, and we are going to need a trash can. 
which we am going to put it here. I don't want this farm to produce anything except PE, so I will be voiding anything which is dropped by pigs. Uh, but I am going to set a filter because this is a huge vacuum hopper and the range is bigger than the farm itself. And in case I drop something expensive, I don't want it to end up in the trash. So I'm just going to put a filter for drops of pigs. Did I set it wrong? Yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> Whitelist, not blacklist. And yeah, this is good to go. I also want to have a little bit of control over how many pigs we are going to spawn. So a redstone receiver and we are going to shift right click with a button module. Screen controller and of course the screen itself. And we just have to scan for new screens. Then we can cover the screen controller because we just need to uh, set this thing up once. Uh, the button module and you don't work. Oh, because I need to set it to toggle mode and uh, yeah. Because I want to act, I want it to act as a lever and not a button. Um, yeah, this thing is almost complete. The sacrificial altar goes in the center, and we give it a test. Do you work? Where are the pigs? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the grinder keeps up with the spawning of the pigs, and now we have to check if we are gaining PE. Uh, yeah, okay. This thing has also an internal buffer of 5000 and I'm not sure if a grinder counts as a player kill or a sacrifice and we are gaining PE, so let's check. 187, so cool, we are gaining PE. That is good. Another thing I want to do is that I don't want to put my book inside because I'm afraid I might drop it and I have to dig a hole. So we are going to put an energy relay and an energy pedestal here. So any PE from the sacrificial altar will burst into our uh, energy pedestal. And another thing I really want to check is that if we put glass there, will it still work? Um, let's not use vanilla glass. Uh, yeah, let's not use vanilla glass, let's use a tinker's glass because it's from a different mod and I want to see if it works. So we just cover it like that and boop, do you send PE? Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. So we can actually cover it with glass. Alright guys, I put dark ethereal glass there because uh, I can walk through it and the pigs cannot. So by this time, oh, okay, we have almost 2000 PE. I also worked on this place a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's not a finished build as usual. <laughs> Sorry, so in any case, we have to proceed now to make the first gateway key. And for that, we are going to need a transmutation mod, which requires our first ritual. So let's set up our ritual. Uh, to make the ritual, you have to put some cobblestone in a pattern like this. There is two gap there, two gap there, and here, and here diagonally there will be only one block gap, and like so. It will look like this. Then you shift right click on the center block with your Necronomicon, and there you go. This is our ritual pedestals. The Necronomicon will tell you how to perform a ritual and which ingredients you're going to need. And it will also tell you if it needs a uh, sacrifice or it needs uh, how much PE. We are going to need a transmutation gem first. Uh, it has a durability. If it crafts something, it will lose durability. I think I'm going to make two transmutation gems because, uh, well, why not? We are here. And um, in any case, let's do the first ritual together. We put the pearl in the middle and we shift right click with our Necronomicon. My particles are off. Normally, it should give you a small particle, and but you can hear and... Well, let, let me just put the particles on for you. So all, yeah, there you go. This is the effect that you should get and then will be a lightning and there you go. Here is your transmutation gem. Perfect. And it uses uh, 300 PE. Shards of the Oblivion. And as you can see, the transmutation gem is losing durability. It has a durability of 10. We needed the shards of the Oblivion in order to make the Oblivion Catalyst, which is the main component of the first gateway key, which will teleport us to a new dimension. And that's the first uh, part of the progression in this mod pack. That goes in the center, and this uh, ritual requires a sacrifice, so I brought a pig. Hi piggy! You see the particle things? We kill it, and we shift right click. Oh no 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 no, I, I, I made a boo boo. <laughs> 
uh, you should not kill the pig yourself. Uh, when you initiate the ritual, uh, the pig will be killed automatically. So we get a new pig. Hello. It was an ugly pig, so it's okay. This one's nicer. Uh, we shift right click and there will be a lot of noise, there will be fire everywhere, the pig is dead and we wait. And it's very noisy. It's draining PE, this is why the book is going up and down. <laughs> Here is our Oblivion Catalyst. Now we can craft the gateway key. And this is our first gateway key. Lovely. Make a space like a standard nether portal and right click with the key. There you go, this is our portal. The key has unlimited uses, so you can spawn as many as these portals as you want, so don't worry. The first dimension that we're going to travel to is called Abyssal Wastelands, and before we go, I want to explain something. We are going to need the Staff of Rending. The Staff of Rending is useful, I also made some safari nets just in case. <laughs> anyway, the Staff of Rending is very easy to craft, if I can just do it. <laughs> It's very easy to craft. Uh, what it does is that it will capture the essence of the dimension that you're at and uh, it will allow you to upgrade your Necronomicon. As you can see, um, here is the recipe. This is the essence of the Abyssal Wastelands and with the Staff of Rending you can capture that essence by right clicking on mobs and killing them. We are going to do that together anyway, so don't worry. I also brought a digital miner and some safari nets in case we find something interesting and we want to bring it back home. And yeah, we are good to go. See you on the other side. Okay, so apparently we have spawned underground, which is not the best... Um... Yeah, we, we can dig a hole. The first dimension, the Abyssal Wastelands. Out of all the dimensions, this is my favorite one because I like how this place looks like. The sand, the grass, the sky, everything is green. I know it's not the lush kind of green, but I like how it looks. And we are going to take this guy back home because he will make a nice addition to our collection. The first thing you want to do is to upgrade your Necronomicon. And in order to do that, you need to use the Staff of Rending on creatures which are spawned from Abyssal Craft. You cannot use it on a normal zombie or a skeleton. You should only use it on Corallium infested zombies and, you know, these big guys. So now we have 12. Uh, when, you right, when you hold right click, they will take damage and they will uh, give you Essence. There you go. Now it's 18. We need a total of 8 essences in order to upgrade our Necronomicon. So I'll do that and I will bring you back. When you reach 100 points, you will get one essence and I have to throw these things out. We need 7 more. While we are here, I also want to mine some liquefied Corallium Ore. So I brought our digital miner and that is used to make some of the armors in this mod and I really want to try it. So let's mine some. You will also get a lot of Corallium gem. That's also an added bonus. Let's go get our essences. Alright guys, we are done, we have our 8 essences and I had to make a safe house for myself because these zombies are so annoying, you cannot stay somewhere for more than 2 seconds and then millions of them show up. So let's uh, do the Necronomicon. Uh, I don't know the recipe so I have to check it every time. We are going to need the clots, I already made 2 and they are in the ME system, so 6 for now and there you go our Abyssal Wasteland Necronomicon. And you can notice that it has also doubled the amount of PE that it can handle because the rituals that we have to do here will require more PE than the original 5000. You can also read this book, it will tell you what to do in this uh, dimension. In order to upgrade our key and progress to the next dimension, we are going to need an Eye of the Abyss and a Dreadland Infused Power Stone. The Dreadland Infused Power Stone, which we are going to hunt next, is located in a stronghold. In order to locate that stronghold, we are going to need Power Stone Locators. Let's make a stack. They work exactly like an Eye of the Ender in Vanilla Minecraft when you want to find a stronghold. So I'll do that and I will bring you back. After a lot of flying, this seems to be the spot, uh, but it's in there. So I'll just dig down in the dirt. 
You have to navigate through the stronghold and find a room which looks like this. So we kill you. That red thing is the power stone and we need to mine that. But first I think I just get rid of this. In order to mine this thing, you are going to need a Corallium pick. I don't have that pick, but a Staff of Power from Draconic Evolution works the same way. Don't break it with a normal pick because it will be destroyed and, uh, well, I don't know, maybe you have to cheat one in. Uh, we're done and we can run away. Alright guys, I'm back in the overworld and I just wanted to charge our Necronomicon with PE. I also want to upgrade our Sacrificial Altar and the Energy Pedestal to the next tier because they will hold more PE and I can chunk load this place and they will just store PE. There is also an armor in this mod which I mined a liquefied Corallium Ore for it from the other dimension. I also want to make that armor, so let's do all of that and I'll be right back. The armor is ready and I just want to see how it looks like. We wear this and... Oh wow, it gives you speed 2 and night vision. That's that's nice. Um, and it wasn't that difficult to craft, it was very cheap. And it also looks very cool, I like it. Um, maybe I will also craft the samurai armor from the Dreadlands dimension, which is the next one. Uh, but this is very nice. I, I love this thing. Another thing that I want to do is to upgrade our Sacrificial Altar, Energy Pedestal and Energy Relay to the Abyssal Wasteland version, which is the third tier. In order to make the third tier of the altars, we are going to need Corallium Bricks. And in order to make the Corallium Bricks, you are going to need Antimatter. You can find lakes of Antimatter under the Corallium infested swamps, which is just next door. You just have to look for it a little bit in caves. What? And I just dropped a bucket. <laughs> nice. Uh, just be very careful not to fall in it, because no matter what armor you are wearing and how much health you have, you will die. When you have your liquid Antimatter, come to the wastelands and drop a bucket on top of liquid Corallium. There you go. I also do this section. And yeah. You can see that there is a stone forming underneath. That's the Corallium stone. And if you smelt it, it will turn into Corallium. Go away, you overgrown baboons. Uh, if you smelt them, they will turn into uh, Corallium bricks. This is science, guys. Antimatter is going to touch matter, and there will be a huge explosion. That was anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah. Now that we have our Corallium Bricks, we can make the Transmutator and upgrade our Altars. We are running low on time, so I will do those things off camera. For now, we will go and try to get the Eye of the Abyss. In order to get the Eye of the Abyss, you are going to need another Ritual Altar. And you have to do this using Abyssal Wasteland Stones, and you have to do it in Abyssal Wastelands. Uh, you have to perform a ritual for the boss to spawn, and then you have to kill the boss and get the Eye of the Abyss. Now we are going to summon Asora, the boss of this dimension. The ingredients that you're going to need for this ritual is in the Necronomicon, so don't worry. You can just go to the Wasteland section and read the ingredients that you're going to need. But it was not very expensive. The only thing was the Transmutation Gem, which was relatively expensive. And you need a brand new one, you cannot use the old ones. So this is Asora, he's an Ender Dragon with, uh, I don't know, green colors. Um, Ha fighting this fight uh, while having a flight and a draconic bow is very easy, but I don't care. <laughs> so we'll finish him and we get the drops. Don't drop them in the lake, you. Okay. What did you drop? A shader, which is not very useful. Where are the rest? Those are rotten flesh. Um, oh yeah, it drops it when he explodes. <laughs> So, did we get the Eye of the Abyss? Oh yeah, we have it. Now that we have everything, we can go ahead and upgrade our key, so that we can move to the Dreadlands dimension. And those jerks also swim. <laughs> nice. Okay, that's the last of our PE, but we have our key. Go away. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, the portal for the next dimension should be built in this dimension. You cannot make it in the overworld. 
see you on the other side. Welcome to the Dreadlands. These purple dudes, uh, they're not aggro on you, they're neutral mobs. So you don't have to kill them and fight them or anything. They're actually very useful because they fight the other mobs who attack you. Don't kill them. But you should definitely kill these guys, the Dread Guards, because they will drop a dreaded Abyssal Knight shard. It has a very weird name, these things. And uh, you're going to need that in order to make the ingots, and in order to progress in the mod, and as well as making the samurai armor. And we are going to take him home, in order to farm him. By now, you guys should know the drill. We are going to need to upgrade our Necronomicon to the Dreadlands Necronomicon. And in order to do that, we are going to need the essence of the Dreadlands. And in order to do that, we are going to need our Staff of Rending. First, we are going to need some PE. Then, we need to upgrade our Staff of Rending in the Abyssal Wastelands, so that it will give us more energy per kill. Then, we have to right-click on mobs in order to get 8 essences. Then, after we have 8 essences, we can make the clots, and after making the clots, we can make our new Necronomicon. Where is it? There you go. After having our Necronomicon, we can make the new altar. The gateway key to the next dimension is not actually a key, it's an altar. And it has two parts, the bottom part and the top part. So, we are going to need to craft them. In order to make the dreadium ingots that we're going to need for the key and the armor, we are going to need a transmutator. You put something corallium based on the top, on the bottom and a dreadium shard on the top. Each two corallium based fuel will give you one dreadium ingot. Like so. As for automation, it works exactly like a vanilla furnace. So, you can use hoppers with it. It will not work with an ME interface. Some dreadium shards and some corallium flesh as fuel. Now we have enough material to make the top half of the altar. And I need also a sacrifice, so I brought a pig. Hello piggy! I don't think you will like the dreadlands. Uh -huh. And there is fire near me and it does not make me happy all the time. Yep, almost time. Good, we have the top half of the altar. And I also need some wood in order to make the samurai armor. Let's see how we look like in this one. This should be very cool because it's very expensive. Oh, and it gives you a lot of puffs. How do I look like? Oh, wow. This is nice. This is really nice. It's now time to make the bottom half of the altar, and I brought another pig. So let's do this thing. I don't think pigs like the altars that much. <laughs> so are you ready? Uh, yeah, finally. We have both parts of the altar. Now we can proceed to the next dimension. Just in case, I also want to upgrade our staff of rending. Uh, wow, that's a very weird chicken. Go away. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Go. Yeah. Okay, so we sacrificed the chicken. In order to have the boss fight for this dimension and proceed to the next dimension, we are going to need to find a biome of Dreadlands Mountains. It has to be this biome, otherwise this will not work. And you have to dig to level 40. When you reach level 40, put the bottom half on the bottom and put the top half on the top and shift right click. Click? What? Will you? Oh, okay, lag. Uh, so you get spawned into a stronghold and here is the boss. Let's go fight the boss. And also there is a crystallizer from Abyssal Craft. It's a device which we are going to need to craft the elytras with. It's in one of the rooms and I'll go find it. It's a small structure and it was in this room. You can craft this device, but it's easier to just loot it from here. At the end of the main hallway, there is a hole and you go down there and the boss should be here. Perfect. We just have to kill him. He has a lot of health. I think he has 1000 health. So it's very... Oh, and he does a lot of damage. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, yeah. 
The Dreadland, the Dreaded Plague actually does a lot of damage. Can I also kill him maybe with a bow? I'm not sure. Uh, do you take damage from a bow? Whoa! Okay. Stop shooting, dude! Um, do I need to eat more? No. Uh, let's try the sword again. It's not doing much damage. <laughs> he has so much health. Um, oh yeah, I need to eat again. Um, okay, let's try it with a bow. Because uh, I like to maintain a level of distance. Well, it does work on him, so that's good. And he's dead. And he will just write you a bunch of stories. And I hope we can go and collect our loot. He will also drop the gateway key to the next dimension. It's not a complete gateway key. We need to put it in a transmuter. But uh, that's not difficult. And he drops a lot of dread shards. Which is nice. Um, this is the key. But uh, we also have apparently another reward behind this wall. So... What? Legendary Treasure of the Dreadlands. Are you kidding me? Are you? It is kidding me. <laughs> oh, is it something under there or no? Okay. Yeah, we take it home, I guess. I put the key in the transmuter and now we can make a portal and go to the third dimension. Perfect. That's actually the last dimension that we're going to need. See you on the other side. Uh, yeah, nice, nice. It looks like the end, so it's it's okay. For the fourth dimension, the only thing that you have to do is to kill the boss in this dimension and jump into the void. You get teleported to the fourth dimension. But for now, I just do the drill that we did in the last dimension, and that's to upgrade our Necronomicon. Also, before I forget, it's useful to carry one of these minions of the gatekeeper because they drop something called Elderich Scale and you need it in some of the crafting. And now that we have all the essences that we're going to need, we can upgrade our Necronomicon to Omotol Necronomicon. And when you have the Omotol Necronomicon, it will tell you the coordinates of the last stronghold, where you will have your final boss fight. Alright guys, I flew to the coordinates and I found the stronghold. Very nice. On the first floor there is a ritual pedestal because the gatekeeper is uh, supposed to drop you a gatekeeper's essence and if he does not do that you can perform a ritual here and summon him again. And on the second floor is the gatekeeper himself sitting on the throne. He does not have as much health as the previous boss but he does much more damage. You see he's almost dead. <laughs> um, okay that's nice. Well, let's eat a burger. Um, well, he gives you a little bit of lore, he gives you a little bit of story, and he will talk a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, well, I'll skip this through. After telling you all the stories, he will enter this phase, which will suck you in towards the explosion. He does quite a bit of damage, it's not like the supernova from Draconic Evolution, but it is a lot. So, we have our essence of the gatekeeper, and now we can upgrade our Necronomicon to the Abyssal Necronomicon. Like so. This is the final book. In order to make the elytra, we need to transmute some endstone into a taxium. And we need some Eldritch shards. And of course, a materializer. Just remember, the only thing that can break a materializer is an Ataxium pickaxe, otherwise it will just break. Then we need to crystallize blocks of coal in order to get carbon. A water bucket in order to get hydrogen and oxygen. For the nitrogen, we need to crystallize nitre and mix it with oxygen. Then we need a small crystal bag. And we put our ingredients inside. And that goes into the materializer. Uh, where's the elytra? Is this a glitch? Okay, yeah, it was a glitch. So we can just take the elytra out. Finally, we have an elytra. Uh, well, I have to do a lot more. Abyssal Craft has a final boss, but it's disabled in this mod pack, and even if you cheat it in, it still doesn't work. 
Alright guys, it's also time to wrap up the episode because this has been a very super long episode. I could not cut it shorter than this and I did not want to make it into two episodes because I wanted to finish Abyssal Craft in just one go. Now we have the Elytras. Any case, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next episode, bye bye.